In this video, we're going to look at getting ESPR running on an M1 Mac, but we're going to do the preparation and then use a pre-compiled version of ESPR, rather than having to compile from scratch. We're going to assume that you've got some OS X command line window experience and are able to issue commands into it ESPR has some dependencies, and there are also some useful tools that are not available on the Apple application store. So we're going to set up an environment so that we can get those things onto your computer. Our first step is to open up a command window and issue a command, xcode select install. And this is going to put the basic compilers and some utilities onto the computer so that uh, it is prepared for the next set of tools that we're going to install. When that is finished, we need to get an X11 environment onto the computer. Apple no longer supports that internally. There's another site called xcourt.org, which has a package um, for you to find and download and then you click on it and follow the instructions. And now for the package manager. There are several possibilities, but for ease of use, Homebrew does a pretty good job. Go onto the brew.sh site, have a look around, look at their documentation, get your head around it a little bit, and then you'll notice that there is a, in a sense, a command line to give just under the word install Homebrew, Copy that into your um, clipboard and then paste that command into the OSX command window. Nice thing about Homebrew is that it tells you what it's about to do and asks your permission before it goes and does it. That's actually quite refreshing. Now, it will take a little bit of time to download and install itself. When Homebrew finishes, it's going to suggest next steps. And there's a couple of commands to capture with a mouse and then paste them in. Go ahead and, and do that. But what we want to do is enhance that uh, by setting up our own definition of what the paths should be. We're going to use a little text editor that actually works within the OSX command window. And we're going to give it some directives. So in the command window, CD to get you back to your home folder, and then enter the command nano.profile. When that starts up, we want to type in the commands that you see, and these directives will then update the, quote, path environment variable. At the bottom of the command window, you'll see some options. In order to invoke those directives, here's another can command to type in, source.profile. And then we could find out if it has worked by typing in the command, which brew. And if we get an opt homebrew bin brew and a return, we know that that part has worked. Just to be sure that homebrew is fully up to date, type in these two commands. It might say, hey, I'm already done, or it might chatter away for a while. There are some helper applications that make life as a simulation person a lot easier. And of course, we can use Brew to install them. Here's some of my favorites. In Edit, it's a simple little graphical text editor. It's great for tweaking model files and maybe editing some source code or some scripts. Xfig. It takes directives that were created in ESPR and turns them into a rather nicer looking image. Meld. It's really about the best thing since sliced bread in terms of visually seeing differences between text files and folders. Highly, highly recommended. And Image Magic. It's a suite of tools that convert between a lot of different image file formats. Can come in quite handy. Here's the brew install command that will get us each of those particular environments. 
and it'll chat away for some time as it gets all the bits and pieces together. Because it's a package manager, it sorts out all of the dependencies for each of these tools. Other than the compiler libraries, uh, basically libxft is something that ESPR needs. It might or might not already be on your machine. Just to check, do the pre-install libxft. I just mentioned compiler libraries. ESPR will expect to find those for GCC, G++, and G Fortran. There is often several versions that are available by way of the brew, but version 11 is the one that works best for ESPR. Give the brew install command, and then when that finishes, check to see that it's in being installed by giving the which commands. Now, just to make sure the pre-compiled version is able to find the correct libraries, we need to create an extra link from the version 11 GC to just a thing called GCC. So give the commands that are shown there. Okay, now let's make some folders. So go back to your home folder and do a MKDIR models. And that's a convenient place to put your models that you're working on or exemplars that you're want, wanting to work with. While we're making folders, it's sometimes convenient to consider that in the future you might want to compile ESPR from scratch. And therefore, it's good to have a source folder. So follow those instructions in case you want that option. ESPR traditionally lives in slash opt slash ESPR on Linux machines and Windows subsystems for Linux and why not for OS X as well. We need to create this folder, but you're going to have to use a sudo command because OS thinks that slash opt is a special place. And then you want to make yourself owner of that new folder, follow those commands. Okay, now comes the fun part. Let's go and get that pre-compiled M1 version of ESPR. So, in your favorite web browser, type in this address, and it should download it. Now, if I've updated things and changed the name of the file, you might change the 17 in that address to, say, an 18 or 19. Once that file's been downloaded, go and look in your usual places where a downloaded file goes, and then issue the following command. Adapt the file name if what you had to get was a little bit different named, but basically, this extracts a tar.xz file and puts the results of the extract in the slash opt folder. If the extract process worked well, use the file manager. Go and look in opt ESPR and you'll see a bunch of folders. Now, did it actually work? So what we want to do is actually try to start one of the applications and we go into the bin folder, and then execute clim. And we do a dot slash clim, and that forces it to use that specific executable in that specific folder. So our next step is to go back to the home folder and a couple of commands we want to give to make sure that we can just normally and easily run the ASPR modular modules. So cd to get back to home, and then we hit source.profile to reestablish the paths, and we say which proj, and we ought to give something back, and if so, we can smile. Let's go into our models folder, and then issue the proj command. That should start up an application, and then suggest that you go into uh, open existing, pick an exemplar, and let it load. It'll copy the file, and then it will restart the project manager focused on that model. So, now you've got ESPR set up on your computer. Enjoy simulating. And if you want to compile from scratch with the latest source distribution, go to the University of Strathclyde webpage to get the source. Now, the compile process itself is essentially the same as you would do on Linux. And there's a video about that process. 
Just be sure to include the extra directive in the install command line dash dash compiler underscore version dash 11 